Welcome to the Deerwood Realty YouTube channel. I'm John Shank, founder and managing broker of Deerwood Realty in St. Louis, Missouri. What do you think about squatters? Are you even familiar with the term? It's kind of strange. I, I was thinking about it today, and you, you've got you've got two kind of issues. You got the people that just break into houses, and then you have people that overstay leases, or there's a tenant dispute, landlord tenant dispute, something like that. Um, but I, I was first, you know, aware of this of this issue. Um, well, back with my property management days, we had one uh, case, but the person wasn't really a squatter. They just didn't pay their they just didn't pay their rent, and uh, they were professionals and. Uh, and they were good, they were really good. They, they got us. And uh, then, I about a year ago, there was a story out of Philadelphia, where an agent had sold a house, and uh, someone that was a, a, a sovereign citizen decided that they uh, actually owned the house, and they they decided to stay there uh, until they were finally removed. But it took a long time, and it damaged the house, and it was a high dollar house, and that's. One of the themes that I'm seeing now with these reports in the news are these these houses that are like nice houses that people are just either breaking into and just staying in, or um, I, I don't really think that the over overstaying of the lease is the same um, the same thing. I think that's just a bad tenant. But anyway, uh, we're going to go over one of the more famous stories now. This uh, I know there's been videos made about it, and I know that uh, YouTube has been pretty strong in throwing them out. So um, I will try to not get the video, rem you know, removed um, by not mentioning names and not, um, you know, basically not mentioning names as but as best I can. And then this is more of a holistic approach. We're not just talking about this particular case. We're we're, we're talking more about the subject in general. Hopefully, that will get me where I need to be now. Uh, I am on Rumble. I will be on X when they get their videos straightened out, and uh, I am on Locals.com. So if I do get booted from YouTube for some bizarre reason, you know, at least you can find me somewhere. That being said, let's get into it. it says, serial squatter refusing to move out of a $2 million Seattle property is also accused of failing to pay rent on another house for two years despite earning $400,000 a year with his wife at the time. Now, look. The, I mean, I, just to, just to start, you know, I think I think there is something to be said for the house in this condition is is in a very nice neighborhood. It's got one of, it's in one of the better school districts. They're not making these. This isn't making the news if it's in the middle of the hood. Okay, so I just want to put that out there that it's it's the nature of what houses are being squatted in that's the problem and again i do make a distinction between a rental uh, dispute a landlord tenant dispute and an actual squatter and this is uh, let me just tell you the difference again just so we can can go over if you intentionally break into a house that you don't think is occupied then you are a squatter okay and you stay there if you are a tenant that moves into a house and you get into a disagreement with the landlord that is not the same so that's just where I'm at on that. So I, I, I already don't like the way this is starting, but it, it's, it's going to be a mess anyway, so let's get into it. It says, a serial squatter refusing to leave a $2 million home in Seattle pulled the same trick on his previous landlords, failing to pay rent for two years and costing them up to $200,000, it is alleged. Now, understand, like I just said in the beginning, these people that do this, this they're good. They know the laws. Okay, they they don't do this because they're um, ignorant of the law. They're doing it to flout the fact that they know the law better than anybody else. Uh, so these these are not innocent people. Okay, they're, it's just not that way. So it says uh, the fellow has sparked a fury in the upmarket neighborhood of Bellevue after squatting for almost a year in a five bedroom property. Who ha and then the owner has claimed in legal filings that the tenant owes him around eight eighty thousand dollars. Now. We're going to see different numbers thrown around. We're going to see different dates thrown around. This story is not crystal clear in any way. 
It says it led to an ugly confrontation between the pair and a protest of around 200 residents demanding the con man cough up or get out. The fellow's family is alleged to have moved straight into the person's, the owner's property from a previous squat nearby where they used similar delaying tactics to avoid paying rent of around $4,000 a month on a three-bedroom, $1.3 million home. Now, look, I'm in the Midwest. A $1 million home is very expensive. Um, ours, you know, well, it was. I guess prices have gone up significantly. But anyway, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Like if you have neighbors in that in that neighborhood, they're not they're not happy about this situation. Um, so it says the fellow uh, was earning a combined income of four hundred eight thousand dollars a year working for a medical consultancy when they moved in, and then it's according to a proof of income letter seen by the Daily Mail. And it says they lost their jobs shortly thereafter. But the landlord claims that the tenants continue living a lavish life for, in his home, doing barbecues, buying new cars, living in the best neighborhood, and sending his kids to the best schools. And then the quote is, whereas the poor landlords, they're doing multiple jobs to support the mortgage of this house. Uh, the tenant has no shame and doesn't care about society. Well, this is a very fascinating um, argument one, it makes it seem like the tenant is spending money on other things when he should be spending it on the rent. Well, maybe that's true, right? Maybe that's true. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's none of my business. It's, it's really not material to the fact that the person isn't paying the rent. Now, you could say, here's what, I, here's what happened when I used to do single-family property management. 99%, unless they were scammers, 99% of the people that didn't pay their rent didn't pay their rent because they had no money to do so. Or they would have. They were honorable people that, you know, either they lost their job, something happened, there was an emergency, and it just didn't work out, okay? But then there's that, you know, 1%, and those guys are professionals, and they know how to work the system, and they use it to their advantage. So it says... The extraordinary row comes as thousands of American property owners struggle with a broken legal system that is allowing squatters to live rent free in upmarket homes without consequences. I don't think that's true. I don't think the uproar is being caused by that. I don't think it's about the broken legal system. The legal system is broken, obviously. But I don't think that's why this is making the news. And we'll go into it a, bit, a little bit later. Um, so the tenant, a father of two, rented the landlord's home in the summer of 2022, but has since only made, paid for one month's rent out of his own pocket, relying on legal aid until May of 2023 when the payment stopped entirely. Now we're gonna go into that in another article. Let's just see if that holds up. But the squatter's freeloading dates back almost four years according to the declaration signed by the local real estate agent. In her statement, uh, this woman that's the real estate agent claims that a couple she had sold a 1.3 million Bellevue property to contact her in September of 2020, complaining that they had rented it to the now tenant of the other property, uh, but he was no longer paying. Now, why you would call your real estate agent when you've made a deal, I don't exactly know. I get calls all the time for things. It says, the fellow was served with a 90-day eviction notice, which he ignored. But it then took until March of 2022 to get a court date in the summer of that year for him to finally be evicted. Now, during that time we can't talk about on YouTube without getting thrown off YouTube, um, there was, you couldn't throw people out of, uh, um, you, you couldn't throw people out of their rentals. It's a terrible thing. Not that I want people thrown out, but if you have no, you know, if you just suspend the laws, it's just terrible. <coughs> there was my cough that just shows up. Sorry. It says, ultimately, the landlords lost two years of rental income worth about $100,000, $5,000 in unpaid utilities, $20,000 in repairs, and around $100,000 in the value of the property once they were finally able to sell it. So painful. It says, the couple is still recovering from the financial and emotional damage caused by the tenant and are unwilling to speak about it. So then uh, the landlord go, or the, the real estate agent goes on to say that not paying the rent utilities, promising rent money within the week, promising to move, none of which is true as evidenced by the fact that they refuse to vacate the property. property. And she says, I can't understand how this, how such behavior is allowed to continue. Well, that's a breakdown of the rule of law. 
But we're going to get into that, too, because other people don't think that way. It says, she said the family left the house in a wreck, but her clients did not recover a penny of the money owed to them because they did not pursue the case any further. And that's just it. I mean, you're already down $100,000 or more. Do you really want to be even down further uh, with the chance of losing? The tenant, or the landlord says, the case did not appear on the background check, uh, which allowed to repeat the behavior. A lot of people say, well, if you just get a good background check, then you won't have these issues. Well, there's these things called cash for keys where the you extort the landlord uh, and say, like, look, if you pay me five grand, I'll go away. That happens all the time. Um, you can get you can get the eviction filed uh, in a different name. Um, it's just it's just a mess. It says the uh, eviction proceedings. The landlord filed the eviction proceedings when the tenant first started missing payments. But the Housing Justice Project, a nonprofit, stepped in on the tenant's behalf, applying for a stay on the eviction and paying some of the back rent. The Housing Justice Project even paid a three months advance on the rent to give the family time to move out. But when the three months were up in May of 2023, the landlord said the family still did not leave and they started missing rent payments again. Despite this, he claims that the tenants have bought two Mazda 3s, which retailed upwards of $20,000 that are parked in front of his home. It's like, so what? What he's trying to say, the argument is, is, well, they have money for other things, but not to pay the rent. That's what they're trying to go with. So it says, the landlord provided the DailyMail.com with an income verification letter signed by the general manager of a medical consultancy uh, firm which said that uh, the tenants are partners in the business and receive an average monthly income including bonuses and commissions equaling $22,000 a month and $12,000 a month respectively. The letter added that the couple are currently exiting the corporate housing that was provided by the company. So look, if you own a business and you're using your rent payments as corporate housing, it's great and all unless you don't have the money. It also, it also makes you wonder like, was it the company that applied for the lease? It's just weird. And then it says, finally, it says that uh, the landlord and his owner organized a protest outside the home on Saturday with around 200 people attending, holding placards and chanting, no pay, no stay. So now we're picketing a residence. That's the best way to do this. I know that's weird. So I looked it up. I put in serial squatter. This was the number one article, but it was a month ago. And there's a lot of it. Okay. But it's also not like, it's not the same one. And it, it's not, it's not like new news. It's from like a month ago. Like, like apparently now we're not doing squatting. So then, this is an absolute leftist organization here that's written this article, and I thought we should go over it because it's important to like look at other people's point of views on things and see if we agree. Um, I am. I don't think I'm a leftist or on the right. I, I'm. I'm not into. I'm not independent either. I don't know what I am. I've not, not figured that out yet. But anyway. It says, Landlord Lives Matter protests against tenant may have been illegal. Okay, so we're going to go with the protest was illegal. May have been. You know, there's a lot of things I do daily that may be illegal, and I don't even know what the rules are anymore. And they, and they only apply to certain people. I mean, it's getting really bad. But anyway, it says, buckle up. It's time for another sensational nightmare tenant story ripped, whipped up by right-wing media personalities. So apparently... Only the right wingers are noticing that people are squatting. I mean, we're, we're already to the point where we don't think it's squatting. We think it's a landlord tenant dispute. It's not somebody that just broke into a house and is staying there. It's somebody that was given the keys to the house and is now there. So again, we don't agree with that already. But a story whipped up, is it, is it, does that make it not true? While my tenant enjoys a relaxed lifestyle, buys news cars and celebrates with barbecues, I continue to struggle to pay my bills and double mortgages, the landlord said in a 
in a uh, in an interview. Now look, it doesn't seem fair. It also doesn't matter. Life isn't fair. You're choosing to work to struggle to pay two mortgages and double bills and I mean that's that's on you. You made these you decided to rent a home out to someone. You decided to do that for whatever reason and that's at the end of the day it's on you. It says this month they apparently decided it was time for an escalation. An associate turned to next door to promote a protest outside the home where the tenant lives with his wife and four children. Now there were two children in the other article. So, like, I don't know if two just showed up or what's going on. Saying that he'd been suffering tremendously and inviting city council, senators, and other community leaders to join our neighbor to protest against non-paying renters who refused to vacate the property despite an eviction order. So not a, not a squatter. So it says, many will find the spectacle of a landlord calling a rally outside of his tenant's home absurd and gross regardless of the details of the situation. Okay. Man, I got to cough again. So just look at the statement again. Many will find the spectacle of a landlord calling a rally outside his tenant's home. This woman who wrote this article has assigned ownership of the property to the tenant. Wow. Watch this. Protesting at a residence generally raises tricky issues of ethics and legality. Okay, how so? When the target is a public fixture or figure whose position and power allow them to ignore public protest, this may be the only way to quite literally bring home the harm their actions cause. So it's okay to target a public official at their home, and that doesn't raise any sort of tricky issues of ethics or legality. It's just if it's a private citizen? A tenant in the middle of eviction proceedings at the risk of becoming homeless is clearly a different case. Actions aiming to drive people out of a community have a much uglier history. You know what? History is ugly. It is. Get over it. That's all I have to say. It's bad. It's bad. We can only, we can only work to, to do better. But to use a historical justification for why it's not why it's why it's not okay to protest at a house, but it is okay to protest at a house if the person is a political figure is just bonkers. In addition to his own, oh, so then they go into well, what is it really a poor landlord? So in addition to his own one point three million dollar home not far away, the landlord owns at least one other property under his own name a $1.1 million house two doors down from this tenant's address. So because the landlord owns more than one property, now all of a sudden it's not a poor landlord. It says these are other subsidiary LLCs own one other rental property and have been party to at least three multi-million dollar property purchase and sales in the past few years. Two of them demo and rebuilds and one a straight flip. It says the extent of the landlord's financial in interest in or profits from all of this real estate activity is not a matter of public record, and I don't think it should be. But this history at least suggests that we should take the struggling small landlord shtick with a grain of salt. This is very fascinating. This is a person that doesn't really understand business. They think that, uh, they think that every, business, every businessman makes a profit. Every business exploits its workers. Um, Totally, totally disconnected from reality. Um, while many businessmen are successful, there are also many businessmen who are not. And the fact that, especially if you look at a development of property, if you're a developer, your number one thing to stay in business is to be able to conserve capital. It's, it's the number one thing. Very hard. And then, I mean, it's just... It's, it's written, I mean, this, this is, it, to me, this is immaterial. It doesn't matter if the tenant is, um, has, it, here, it, it goes both ways. It doesn't matter if the tenant has enough money to pay the rent and chooses not to, and it doesn't matter if the landlord has 50 other properties 
and is um, making money off of his investments. Neither of those two things are, to me, issues relative to this person hasn't paid the rent on time. The law is not working on behalf of the landowner, and that is a problem. That's all there is to it. It says, whether leading a protest outside a distressed renter's home is a pro... Again, it's not the distressed renter's home. It's the landlord's home, and he leases it out for the enjoyment of the tenant. And then for that, he gets an amount of money. Whether it's appropriate conduct for someone in this position would make an interesting topic of discussion at the commissioner's next meeting. So what this is, is this fellow... The landlord is is part of a, a political group, um, and whatever you can read the article, I got the link in the description below. The tenant received pandemic rental assistance through the Housing Justice Project, covering his family rent from October 2022 through May 2023. He now is about forty five thousand unpaid rent. Now look, why? I mean, when you think about Housing Justice Project, don't you think like, oh, they're helping poor people who are being exploited by sophisticated landlords and organizations? That's what I think. It's not to pay a $4,000 a month rent in one of the pricier sections of of Seattle. Right? And then he goes and talks about, now the poor tenant says, ironically, he says the publicity made it hard for him to leave the rental property. I'm trying to keep the kids in the same school. The video made it difficult for me to find a new place to move, let alone get a job locally. Look, you're mooching off of the landlord. Now, I understand that if you're a communist, you don't believe in uh, private property. Like, no property is, is private. I get that. It says King County Superior Court is indeed moving more slowly than usual, but that's because the court is dealing with an avalanche of evictions. That's not acceptable. See, that's the thing. It's like we're making exceptions under the law. Why? Just do your job. Ten says the landlord and his lawyers have only themselves to blame if things are moving slowly. It's not a broken system. It 100% is. It's their broken approach to it. They didn't want to take the proper steps or give a fair chance to negotiate a repayment. Now we're negotiating a repayment plan. You think the tenant's going to pay that? They were cutting quarters to get it done as soon as possible, and that's why we got to this point. No, we got to this point because you didn't pay the rent. And then you used a, a public and uh, NGO to, uh, to keep you in the house because you're smart. Uh, it says, back to the protest outside Kim's, Kim's home, whether you think it was appalling or justified, it may have been illegal. Again, you walk across the street anymore, you've broken the law somehow. The is now dealing with the aftermath of the protest. It's not easy. Now have people calling anonymously, using nasty language and hanging up. Most people attend the protest weren't even from the neighborhood. It's a, an exclusive neighborhood. Like, I'm, not, I'm probably not allowed there as just a young, you know, normal, uh, middle-class working man. Probably not allowed there, which makes it even more funny. If they wanted to have a rally for landlords' rights... They could have just as easily had it as a neighborhood park, having in front of the tenant's house. Again, not the tenant's house. The tenant does not own that house. It serves no purpose except to harassment. And then it goes into the, the vigilante justice and things like this. It says, Washington laws on forcible entry and detainer are interpreted to prohibit landlords from using menace, intimidation, or force to oust a tenant or occupant of a property, regardless of that person's right to be there, which is wrong. Which is wrong. And so the lawyer who's the spokesperson for the uh, group that's helping the tenant says uh, he feels like this is a slide away from the rule of law. Also using the law as a weapon to, uh, to keep a landlord from uh, getting their property back when the tenant's not paying is also a slide away from the rule of law. Actually, the, the rule of law has been slid away from so badly. It's, it's really a case of people either follow the rules that they are aware of and they, and they try, or, you know, it's crazy. Well, now this, I don't know if this would work, but there is this thing that I saw in California called the squatter hunters. 
What you do is you write a lease to these people. They move in next to the squatter. They have every legal right to be there. They have a lease. And then they just annoy the hell out of the, the, the tenant. And then they leave. In theory, I don't know. Seems like an idea. Let's get into the questions for tonight. Sorry, my voice is scratchy and stuff. And I got a cough. It says, uh, what has triggered the recent media focus on squires? I think, I think it's, it's, it's because houses have become unaffordable. I mean, if you're, young, if you're a young couple just starting out, probably can't afford a home at, at these prices with combination of the prices and the mortgage rate. Very, very frustrating. And so when you see people just breaking the law and getting away with it, now again, I make a distinction between squatters and a tenants that have overstayed their lease or have broken their lease. And understand, I don't think landlords are always perfect. I don't think tenants are always perfect. Uh, I'm just looking at this from the perspective of why has this become uh, an issue today? I don't think it's right-wing media. I think it's that houses are actually just so unaffordable. And when you see people just, you know, literally break into homes, okay, it's, it's a bad deal. Um, how do current tenant laws in cities like Seattle impact the, avail- uh, the ability of landlords to manage squares? Well, I can tell you what's going to happen. Um, when you have these mom and pop landlords, say they own two or three properties, they're not sophisticated enough over time to be able to go without rent for months and months at a time. So they will get out of it or they will charge more for their, their property. Since they probably won't be able to get more for their property because it's kind of market-based, uh, they'll end up selling out. And these large, large corporations that manage hundreds and hundreds of doors or hundreds of thousands of doors will move in and they will definitely have a team of lawyers that just sit at the courthouse all day long and file the paperwork necessary to, to take care of the problem. That's what you're going to do. At the end of the day, that's what's going to happen. It's because uh, it's because they didn't follow the um, the courts didn't follow the the they didn't take care of the people that uh, were the mom and pops. That's all there is to it. It says, "Can squatters' rights be justified in today's housing crisis?" I don't think it could ever be justified. Squatters' rights. Now let's define that. If you break into a house and you're living in it, you're a squatter. You have no rights. It's not your house. If you're a tenant landlord having a dispute, it's up to the courts to decide if it, who's justified with what, and it needs to go that way. I will say this. If you have an eviction order from a court and the sheriff is backed up six months, something should be done on the government level to get that straightened out much, much faster. It says, what practical solutions can landlords implement to prevent squatting? Well, you know, if, if they're going to break, the, break into the house to, to, to move in on a squatting, then I don't think there's a whole lot you can do that they're just breaking the law. As far as for the tenants, you're supposed to be able to screen for them. Again, these people are very, very sophisticated. And these, these particular scammers are also wordsmiths. I mean, they will just talk your ear right off and they will get in. So I don't know. It says, how should policymakers balance the rights of landlords with the needs of tenants and squares? There's no question. If private property is a thing, then you need to protect it. It needs to be protected by the courts. If it's not, then uh, then they've already taken care of that. They're already making it ridiculous. There should be no allowance for squatters at all. It says, what role does the community have in addressing issues related to squatters and housing instability? I don't even understand housing instability. Stronger laws are needed. Um, The community should should speak out. I don't know that I would protest at someone's house. I think that was a a, a spectacle. Uh, That's where I'm at. Um, Long video tonight. Sorry. Been wanting to do this for four or five months. Finally got out there. Let me know what you think. Hope you stayed for the whole thing. If not, I understand. 
I'm going to head out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one.